Hey, we got cut off on that other video. I don't know what happened. My phone decided to reboot. But anyway, once again, uh, this is your man, Dr. Will. You know the deal. Let me know what city, what state, what country you are chiming in from. Even if you're watching the replay, let me know what city, what state, what country you are chiming in from. As I said, I always love to see where we are connecting from all around the world. Good morning, Regina, on this beautiful Saturday morning. I'm here in Phoenix, Arizona. So wherever you're connecting from, let me know what city, what state, what country. This morning, um, I want to talk to you about negativity. Negativity. What's going on, Dennis? What's going on, Shalise? Good to see you. We got to catch up real soon. Um, um, we got we to gotta look at how we deal with negativity, right? So when we talk about negativity, most people are, um, most people are driven um, to negativity, right? They, um, they, they are just attracted to neg negativity. They want to talk about negativity. They want to respond in negative um, ways. And so you, the faster you can understand that negativity is just normal. It's a normal part of life. Now, it's, it's usually not beneficial, but it is normal. <clears throat> Let me say that. Negativity is usually not beneficial, but it is normal. It is normal. And so since it's normal, but it's not beneficial, you have to decide and you have to make the choice how you're going to respond to negative people and negative situations. And when you learn how to respond in positive ways versus negative ways, because if you're dealing with a negative person, you're dealing with a negative situation, you becoming negative, are you responding negative? It's not going to help the situation. So this is something we have to, number one, become aware of. And number two, we have to learn how to make the self corrections. We have to learn how to make the self corrections. I remember earlier on, <coughs> um, I used to always meet negativity with negativity. If you, if you aggress me, I was going to aggress you. Um, I grew up and I had a real, um, I had a real bad temper. I, I had, you know, I guess clinically they would say I had anger issues or whatever that would be, right? So anytime somebody aggressed me, um, I would aggress them back in a negative, in a negative manner. As I got older, I realized that um, that wasn't going to be beneficial. And I remember the, the last big incident that I had was when I was in the army. Um, um, I got into a situation and I got into a fight in the army and this was early in my career. Like I was in less than a year and, um, the result of this was that they wanted to kick me out of the army. They wanted to kick me out of the army because I got into a fight and uh, I'd hurt the <coughs> I'd hurt the individual pretty bad. So they wanted to kick me out. But thankfully, um, I had a leader at that time that um, used wisdom. He understood I had some challenges and he was willing to mentor me and help me. And that was the last major, um, as I think about it, probably the last major time that um, I displayed some 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 real anger and, and negativity toward a situation because now I realize once again meeting negative with negative it wasn't going to to help me and so do I still deal with you know sometimes um, yeah yeah Regina that Compton that Compton was in me um, do I sometimes deal with negative people and, and people that come up to me with attitudes? Yeah, anytime you're out in the public, um, there's a high probability that you're gonna deal with that. And so what I had to do was reframe the situation. So when people would aggress me early on, I would I would take it as you're trying to punk me. You're you're trying to you're you're trying you're trying to test my my manhood. That's how 
when someone would say something negative to, to, to me, that's how I would receive it. Oh, this person is testing me. Oh, this person is challenging my manhood. And so now I have to stand up for my manhood. I have to stand up, right? I'm not going to let you, I would say things, you're not going to run over me. You're not going to punk me. And so whenever you receive something in a negative connotation, then the natural proclivity is to respond in a, a negative way. So you have to learn, right? You have to rewire yourself how you respond. So today, if something happened in a negative sense, someone aggresses me today, in my mind, I have to reframe it. I have to receive it in a different manner. And this is literally what I do. If I'm somewhere and let's, it, it could be something simple. And this is the craziness about it. You know, um, you can be in line or something and, you know, you can be in a mall or you can be in a store or something. And you know how you go get in line and there may be somebody standing there that may be off to the side or something and you really didn't notice them. So you just get in line. And instead of them saying, excuse me, I was in line. They may say something right. Crazy. Hey, don't be cutting me who you think you are. You better get in line. Right. So at that moment, when they're coming at me aggressively, I have to rechannel what they're saying to me. Because before, I would channel it as, oh, you trying to punk me? You think I'm a punk? You think you about to just talk to me any old kind of way? So now, I've had to reprogram myself to smile at this individual. And I have to tell myself, this is what I tell myself internally, Will. This person doesn't know you. This this person doesn't know how crazy you can become. This person doesn't know the possibility of them being injured. They don't know that. They they don't know that. They don't have that information. Because if they had that information, they wouldn't be talking to you the way that they're talking to you. Now, this, this conversation plays in my mind in a real fast way. Like it comes to me super fast. Not like I'm talking to you very slowly, but it comes to me. I have to remind myself, right? I have to remind myself very quickly that the individual on the other side, they don't know who they're talking to. They don't know who they're talking to. They don't know what I'm capable of, right? So I have to remind myself of this. And like Jesus said, seriously, like Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I have to tell myself this. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. <clears throat> if I don't quickly come to this place, if I don't quickly come to this place, this situation can get, what, what do we say? Blown out of proportion. Blown out of proportion. Something as simple as just two people standing in line can turn into something deadly, right? And I grew up like this. I grew up in an environment where if you looked at someone the wrong way, we would say things like, what are you looking at? I grew up in an environment, if you stepped on somebody's Jordans, that literally could start a fight. Possibly it could get you killed. Possibly. As crazy as that sounds, right? That's, but that's the environment that I grew up in. That like if you looked at someone the wrong way, that could cause confrontation. So when you're wired like that, when you're wired like that, as you become an adult, you got to realize that that response is not a healthy response. That response is not a beneficial response response. So I had to train myself to tell them and to diffuse the situation very quickly, very quickly, because if I don't diffuse the situation very quickly, and I remember like, like we didn't, we didn't have that whole turn the cheek and be the bigger person. You know, when we were growing up, we didn't, we didn't have that whole rationale. We weren't turning the cheek, you know, the people that I hung around, they would begin to jump, man, you gonna let him talk to you like that? Man, you gonna let him say that to you like that? 
If you walked away, they would say things like, man, I know you're not afraid. I know you're not scared. Man, are you scared of him? And they would just be throwing fuel on the fire, right? They, they would just be throwing fuel on the fire. But this was all unproductive behavior. And so in life, as we get, um, you know, in your workplaces, you know, you may have a supervisor that talks to you crazy, right? But at the end of the day, if you lose that job, in a moment of haste, it's not going to hurt them. It's probably more so going to hurt your family, the, the economic hit that your family would take, right? I'm not saying that you let people run over you. I'm not saying that you let people just, you know, misuse you and abuse you and things like that. But I want you to be cognizant of your response in those situations. And what is your mechanisms that you're going to build in place to help you diffuse these types of situations? Um, when you're dealing with negative situations, like that's when you deal with negative people. But what happens when you deal with a negative situation? Um, you know, you get a flat tire on the way to work or um, something happens to your car or the, the washing machine goes out. Like negative things happen. It's normal in life. It's normal in life. You know, you have your washing machine long enough. It's going to go out. You, you drive your car long enough. You know, you're more than likely going to get a flat tire. Something's going to probably happen to your car. That's going to happen. That is a normal part of life. But how we respond to these things makes all the difference. How we respond to these things. You know, uh, the Bible says it like this. In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. So you may be thinking, man... I have a flat tire. How, how, how can I give thanks in this moment? I'm going to be late for work. Well, be thankful that you have three other good tires. Be thankful that you have a spare. Be thankful that you have a job to be late to. Be thankful that uh, you didn't get into an accident. Be thankful that you have the money to repair the tire. Be thankful um, that you have a, a car that can even get a flat. Like there are so many things that <clears throat> you can be thankful of, right? And so in everything, give thanks. This is how you begin to train yourself. This is how you begin to train yourself to respond positively in negative situations and with negative people, guys. Because once again, if you meet negative with negative, more than likely a positive is not going to come out of that. A positive is not going to come out of that. And so once I learned, you know, that negative, that negative people, negative situations was a normal part of life, but how I responded would make all the difference. That's what made all the difference. It's not that I don't go through negative things. It's not that I don't deal with negative people. I just choose, right? I just choose to deal with it in a positive, in a positive way. I know it's normal, you know, um, with those you hang around the most, you know, I have a group of friends and we've, you know, hung around for 20 years and um, I always tell them, you know, um, there's, it's impossible for us to hang around this much and for there not to be some discrepancies in the relationship, for there not to be some misunderstandings in the relationship and things like that. Just when you hang out with people over you know, a long period of time, um, you know, there's a, there's a, a, a probability, you know, of there being misunderstandings, but I, I took the stance that, listen, you know, if we ever have a misunderstanding, I'm always going to take the high road. I'm not going to talk bad about anybody. I'm not going to, um, uh, malign anyone's name. I'm not going to, um, you know, think about them in a negative sense. Because what I realize is more than likely the relationship could be repaired. And so I don't want to add to, right? I don't want to add. Like we had this, we had this initial disagreement, but then if I go and start talking about you negative, now we're adding on more to the initialness. Like we can handle the initial situation that happened, but if you or me go and we just start adding on it, and I didn't like them no way. I never liked them. They was always funny acting anyway. Well, then that just makes it even harder to bring the relationship back to, 
you know, fruition. So for me, I always say my, my, my mouth and my heart, my mouth is going to stay closed and my heart is going to stay open. My mouth is going to stay closed and my heart is going to stay open. And when we figure this all out, I'll be here with open arms to give you a big old hug and we can continue the relationship. All right. And so that's, you know, it's, it's this life that we live in guys. It's learning these simple little things like this that makes all the difference, that makes all the difference in the world. How you respond is not what happens to you, but it's how you respond to all of these life challenges, all these uh, different things that happen to us in life is how we respond to it. And so this is why I could, you know, <clears throat> the Bible says with, with all your might, endeavor to lead a peaceable life. With all your might, endeavor, endeavor to lead a peaceable life. When it talks about might, it talks about your skills and your resources, right? Endeavor, like learn these skills, learn these, uh, you know, uh, uh, how to transform your mind, learn these things. So you can endeavor to live, live a quiet and peaceable, peaceable life. And so this is why um, there's very, I'm trying to think like there's very few things I stress out about. Um, there's very few things that I worry about. There's, I'm trying to like, I don't get into arguments with people. Um, I'm trying to think like the I, I can't even think of a last argument that, you know, I've, I've had because once again, negative meant with negative doesn't lead to a positive. I'm always asking myself, what is the result? What is the result? What is the result that I want in this situation? Right. And every everything I'm, you know, if I'm getting into a disagreement with someone, I always ask them, like, what's the result? Like if I go to the store and I'm not getting the response, I want to return something. You know, I'm not getting the response that I want. Me going off on the person working at the counter is not helping me get the response that I want. It's not helping me get the result that I want. And so I have to stop myself and say, OK, I can stand up here and I can start a yelling match back and forth. Right. Right back and forth with this individual, but that's not the result I came in here for. The result I came in here for is to exchange or to get a refund on this item, right? And so, you know, I go through, I can sensibly talk about, okay, what is your policy? Let me find out if I may be in the wrong. Maybe, maybe I overlooked your policy, right? Let me, maybe I overlooked your policy. And that could end it right there. If I overlook the policy, I tell myself, we'll take the loss, right? Take the loss, take this, whatever, go donate it to somebody, go give it to somebody, right? Let's turn in everything, give thanks, okay? Go, go figure out how we can turn this negative into a positive, right? But I'm not going to get out of character and just go back and forth with this young man or this young lady behind the counter that really... <clears throat> doesn't deserve that. And so I'm always cognizant about that, right? I'm always cognizant about that, right? I'm always, you know, I get it. You know, I'm on the phone, you know, when you're on the phone talking to the bank, talking to the insurance, talking, it's so easy to get frustrated or whatever, but I'm always in my mind, okay, how can you diffuse this? Maybe this person's not the individual, right? You're not the individual I need to talk to. You know, I'll say, you know, Barbara, I understand that you're reading a script right now and that you have certain protocols. So if we could just go ahead and get to the bottom of your script and your protocol where um, I ask you to talk with a manager. And if you could just get me over to that, like we don't even have to go through that whole dialogue. I appreciate um, you trying to help me, but I realize that you're not the individual um, that can give me the result that I need in this situation. So I want you to have a great day, but if you could just go ahead and yeah, wherever we need to get to where you have, you know, uh, the authority and the, to get me to the next level, I so greatly appreciate that.
And so every time, right, every every time, you know, the person would begin to chuckle, they'll begin to laugh. And they're like, okay, this, this is not this guy's first rodeo. Because I realize, okay, I understand there's levels. Like you have a certain amount of authority that you can do, right? And this issue, this problem is it's above your pay grade. Does it make them a bad person? So I'm not going to go back and forth with them. Let me find out who can help me. That's that's what we want to get to. I want to get to that result so I can get to the person that can help me. So I just have that little dialogue. I know you got to read from a script and um, your, your job is to kind of deter me from that. But um, I'm just going to go on and need you. <laughs> no, no, Regina. It's not making Barbara feel. I, it's not about making Barbara feel <laughs> stupid. I just want her to know I understand her plight. I understand. I understand her plight. <laughs> like, I under, Barbara, I'm person number 100 you probably talked to today. People have probably been getting nasty with you all day, Barbara. I understand that you're just doing, that's what they tell you, right? I'm just doing my job. Barbara, I greatly understand that you're just doing your job. I greatly understand that. You're just doing your job, Barbara. You're supposed to tell me no. You're supposed to tell me whatever this script says, Barbara. That's what you're supposed to communicate. I honor that, Barbara. I honor that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I tell her, I know she's reading the script, Regina. Okay, I won't tell them no more. I know you're reading the script. But <clears throat> yeah, let's let's just get Barbara so you won't get frustrated. And so I won't get frustrated, Barbara. And so you can maybe hang up with me and then go help somebody else that you can help. But right now, this situation, Barbara, I understand that we're not going to get to the result that I need to get to. So let me just go ahead. <clears throat> let me just go ahead and uh, get to... Let me just go ahead and get to Sam or, or get to Brenda that, that can help me out. And we can go on and both still have lovely days, right? That's guys, that's how you have to, that's how you have to approach this, right? Because once again, you're always going to have the opportunity to go negative, but you also have the opportunity to go positive. So always choose positive, guys. Always choose, always choose positive. And now this is not going to happen. It doesn't happen overnight, right? It, it didn't happen overnight for me, right? I didn't just go from being angry all the time to being peaceful. Like it's a work in progress. And sometimes it even, you know, depending on the aggressiveness, it may kind of rear its head sometime. And I have to, I have to remind myself, right? I have to remind myself like, come on, Will, bring it back down. Bring it, bring it back down. You know, <clears throat> I'll share this with you. Here in Arizona, here in Arizona, we live in um, a open carry state. So um, you, you're allowed to, you know, carry your gun. You're allowed to have your gun and carry it in the open. <clears throat> and so um, you have to, you know, be careful and be cognizant of things like that, because something so small can turn into like, once again, like I use the example of just standing in line. So if that person is like I used to be, if that person is like I used to be thinking, oh, he tried to cut me in line because he thinks I'm a punk. I'm about to show him. So as something as simple as, hey, sir, you cut me in line. I was, I'm standing here. It can turn into, oh, <laughs> like Regina, I, I tell my, I tell myself that all the time. Like you, you're trying to remind me that I'm from Compton. I used to tell myself that all the time. You, you about to remind me I'm from Compton. You about to remind me, you about to remind me I'm from Compton. And so I have to, this is something I still work on guys, because it's still there. Like it's, it's still there. I still like, you know, still, I can, I can still throw these hands. I can still throw these hands. So I'm like, you know, and, um, and so I have to be, it's not about them. It's not about them. It's about me, right? It's about me because I have to look at, and you have to look at, man, what, what am I going to lose? You know, more than likely in those types of situations, you probably have more to lose than that other person, right? You probably have more to lose than that other person. So they have, you know, that whole saying, I ain't got nothing to lose. I ain't got nothing to lose. 
Like when people tell you that, you got to listen to that. When people say, I ain't got nothing to lose, don't you combat that with, I ain't got nothing to lose either. Man, you got a lot to lose. So I had to remind myself that like, man, they may not have nothing to lose, but I got a, a lot to lose, right? I got a lot to lose. And you got to be cognizant of it. You got to remember that as well. You have a lot to lose. So when people be telling you, I ain't got nothing to lose, man, them are dangerous people. Them are dangerous people. <laughs> right, 49th and Central. Right, right. Yeah, it's a process, guys. It really is a process. And so um, over the years, I just initially had to recognize it. I, I had to recognize it, right? I, I had to recognize it. And I had to say, oh, okay, Will, you're you're going into that that place that's not going to be positive. You're 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 getting ready to act in a way that's not going to bode well for you. So, guys, just think about this, right? In everything that you do, ask yourself, man, what's the what's the result that I'm trying to get? What's what's the end result that I'm trying to get? This will help you in all levels of your relationship, right? With your spouses, with your children. I used to, you know, dealing with my daughter, you know, she's starting to, when she was starting to be a teenager, I always had to ask myself, okay, what's the result? What's the result? Because this little girl wants me to wring her neck. So I got to ask myself, what's the result that I want in this situation? The result is I don't want a dead daughter. That's not the result I want. So I need to reframe, you know, because like, once again, in parenting, is she trying to disrespect me? Is she trying to disrespect me? Is she trying to pump me in my own house? Like if if you're internalizing the information that's coming to you like that, then your response, oh, you're not because you start saying, I pay the bills in here. I'm the one that put these clothes on your back. I'm the one. So you, you start taking it in an aggressive situation. So I had to remind my, okay, what's the result? And I had to remind, okay, this is a young girl who's trying to figure out life, who's trying to figure out herself. She got hormones going on. She She's 15, 16, but she thinks she's 28. So I got to let her go through this process. I got to give her the space to go through this process. So she hasn't learned the lessons that I have learned. So when I used to tell myself, Will, you got to be the adult in the situation. You can't become another teenager in the situation. If I became a teenager in the situation, oh, you trying to punk me oh, in my house? So I had to reframe Right. I had to reframe how I was taking that information. I couldn't take in everything as she has an attitude. I couldn't take in everything as she's trying to disrespect me. She's trying to question my authority, because when I took it in like that, I always would respond in not such a positive light. Right. And so I had to learn this inside of my parenting. Not only did I have to learn this as an individual dealing with other people, but I had to learn this inside of my parenting to say, OK, let me let me. Let me diffuse the situation because obviously what I just said, she internalized it the wrong way because I, I just told her to do something and she internalized it like it was an option. So maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't communicate it correctly. So let me step away. Let me come back. Let me think about how I can re redo this, Right. Right. Let me. Yeah. David, David, that I have to I don't want a dead daughter because that's what she she was on her. She was on her way to being dead. Right. I, I don't want that. Not that I, I'm in jail now. My Now I'm impacted. Right. So that's not the result we want. So I would have to say, let me reframe this, because obviously the way I explained it the first time, she thought it was an option. She thought when I said, go clean your room, she thought. On my time, when I get ready to do it, maybe next week sometime. And she didn't understand the urgency in which I was communicating what I wanted to happen. So let me go back. Let me have a conversation. Uh, Kara, I said, clean your room. What did you hear? What, what did you hear? When I said, Kara, clean your room, what did you hear? Because when I was saying, Kara, clean your room, in my mind, that meant stop everything you're doing right now, clean your room, and then you can get back to doing what you want to do once what I want done is complete. 
But obviously that wasn't communicated, right? Where she received it. Because when I walk back past the room and the room is still the same and you still on your phone laying in your bed. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was I talking to the walls? So I had to learn how to, hey, let me see, because maybe she didn't hear what I thought she heard. So, Kara, what did, what did you hear when I said, uh, clean your room? And it was so funny because that's when she would come back. She was like, oh, just by the end of the day before I go to bed, um, that my room needed to be clean. That's what she would come back and say. I said, okay, all right, well, let me make this more clear. Um, it's now 2 o'clock. It's now 2 o'clock. Uh, by 4 p.m., uh, this room needs to be, this room needs to be clean. All right. Is that a little bit more clear? And so now we now have a common ground on the result that's expected in the time frame that it's expected. But I had to learn, like before I would, Kara, I know I told you to clean this room. Why? Well, dad, I didn't, you didn't say right now. I didn't know you meant right now. Right, <laughs> right. Oh, this thirteen-year-old boy. Right. Same thing with Champ. Right. Same thing I do with Champ. Right. And so I had to make sure I had to sit down, like Champ. Now, what did you hear, Daddy say? Because when I said take out the trash, what did what did you hear? In Champ's mind, what he heard was, "Oh, when I get finished playing all my games, when I get tired of doing what I want to do, I'll entertain what Dad wanted me to do." And so I had to realize, and I ended with a dead son. So let me let me reframe it. <laughs> you woke your son up at three a.m. two weeks ago, <laughs> right? And because we're just having a mis we're having a miscommunication, <laughs> right? 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 Doctor Jennifer, right? We're just having a miscommunication, and so we don't want to turn a negative. We don't want to meet a negative with a negative, right? Because at the end of the day, right, I'm always thinking, man, when my daughter gets 24 years old, when my daughter gets 25 years old, when my son gets 30, I still want them to have a relationship with me. I still want them to come and talk to me. So I don't want to break their spirits. I don't want them to leave this house thinking that this guy was a demigod. This guy was just angry all the time. That's not what I want them to think about me. That's not what I want them to think about me, right? And so we had to establish, right? Like, no, I'm the parent. And so when I say something, like I'm meaning right now, that's like the moment I say it, that's when it needs to get attention. But we had to work through that. We had to talk about that. And so they had to reframe their mind because in their mind, champ, like, oh, I thought you meant after I finished playing with all my Legos and playing all my video games. And basically when I get tired, then I'll go entertain. And so I had to, no, no, no. Like, like, like the police, like when they say freeze, like you need to go into immediate action right then freeze, not like down the block, not like, like freeze. So I had to tell them like, as soon as I say something, as soon as I say something, I need to see an immediate action. You know, like when you call your kids. Hey, hey, I remember I used to care. Do you think I'm just calling you for my health? When I call you, do you think I'm just calling you because I'm just calling you for my health? Like the moment you hear that voice, you need boom, beep, boom. Yeah. Uh, uh, what? No, no, no. Don't say huh, what? When you hear my voice. All you need to do is just be coming toward the voice. Come toward the voice. Come to draw, let your body be drawn toward the voice. Right? Right? Let let your let your body be drawn toward the voice. Immediately. You don't even have to reply. All you need to reply is I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Right? And so because, you know, <laughs> When I didn't know this earlier on, when I didn't know this earlier on, like we, me and Carol would, would butt heads and I realized, okay, boom, I'm hitting negative with a negative and we're not having a positive outcome and she's going to think her dad is crazy. So that's not the result that I want in this situation. So how can I change so she won't think that I'm crazy and how can I change so I won't think that she's crazy 
and that we can have a winning relationship. And so those are just ideas, guys, that I want you to be cognizant of and think about, right? <laughs> right, you got to have that talk with them, Regina. You got to have that talk with them. Maybe you and maybe you and uh, your husband that to sit down like and tell them. And, and we, you know what? It's interesting with boys because that's what Christy would tell me with Champ. And so we had to have that conversation that... Um, you like your kids to know I'm crazy. Like, we have to have that conversation with him. Like, hey, she gets the same respect and the same energy that I get when I say something. So, all right, guys, I got to get ready for a coaching call this morning. But I hope that helps you out, gives you something to think about on this Saturday. Go out there and have an amazing day, and I'll talk to you guys later.